I actually think that it gets them a little more excited in learning exactly what they want to tell the parents that they are learning, right? Um, more than showing off to the parents of, you know, what they have learned. At times, I think it gets them a little more hooked to learning, uh, which is which is a good thing. This is our PBR physics project. This is an energy generation facility since our problem statement asked us to convert waste energy into useful forms of energy that can be used in our daily life. The electrical energy powers of many different houses. We don't live in silos, right? And here we have physics, chemistry, bio, combined with social, uh, social sciences, history and geography. And I think through these projects, children realize that the whole world is interconnected. And just because you're doing a physics project, you cannot ignore the history behind it. So they learn that everything is integrated. And somewhere along the line, I also feel that if they have an aptitude for a certain subject, that can be drawn out through these uh, project-based learning cycles that they go through. Now the world has changed, it's very competitive. You might know chemistry completely, but you might not be able to succeed because it does not require only the subject knowledge. It requires you to make connections, develop that skills which are very important. So I think this PBL is a way of giving them that opportunity to work on the skills, apply what they study in one subject and come up, solve problem. It's all about solving problem, right? And right now I think world has enough problems that they need to be able to solve. Speaking for humanities, I think people often take it as a very, um, you know, sort of a redundant and boring and, you know, mundane kind of approach, you know, teacher driven mainly. But here at uh, PBL, here at Inventure, I think we are doing it the student way. The best part about PBL is that the students interpret the things on their own. What solutions do they want out of it? They analyze it, they find out, they research about it, they deep dive into it and they come up with the most unique solutions to the same. Distinctions become blurred when you ask honest questions. Disciplines are sort of artificial divides and the children don't know that. They just have questions. So when you actually let them explore the questions in the way that they see fit, these sort of uh, disciplinary connections sort of emerge. Let's say you start working with your hands. Then these connections are imminent in the making of your product. For example, something like this. This is a Ferris wheel, right? So when they started working with this, there were so many, like they were first looking at rotation. But when you're looking at rotation and trying to get an optimum movement, friction becomes a part of it. So these, like, you know, to get optimum rotation, you need to tackle friction. And then to use materials, if you choose bamboo, you're choosing sustainability. So that's what they're doing in geography. So these, I think, distinctions are artificial and any honest way of asking these questions sort of blurs them automatically. One of the best properties I find of the bamboo bottle is that it can be used as a flask. This is the most simplest one that I have seen so far, right? Um, and it is a complete product. <laughs> it's a bamboo bottle. We, uh, the, our problem question was to come up with um, an alternate option for plastic bottles as they're polluting our environment. So we, after doing a lot of research, going through coconut bottles and mud bottles, we arrived at the bamboo bottle. Enthusiasm they have, right? They are proud of what they have made. And uh, that's what I like about the way uh, the school runs, right? Uh, that's what I like about the way um, they teach here, right? They give that confidence in the kids that they can build something, they can make the world better. 
we researched about bamboo and we saw that it has a lot of advantages for Than instance other bodies. yeah so it's eco friendly and it's good for the environment and it's then it's easy to carry so we can also use it as a flask and bamboo it it's grows very really fast yeah it's strong and durable and then bamboo can grow really fast so we can make more bottles with that i also asked them about how how did they arrive the price of this one it looks like they have done some research right and they know what are the difficulties to of making this procuring and also labor right it's not only about um, you know getting the material you have to know how to create and then sell it and they have thought from procuring the material until you know making it uh, complete quality check and then you know sell it outside we have learned to collaborate with each other work as a team because we went through um, a lot of problems like yeah. some of us we were and unwell we had to stay online so we all improvised and in the end we were able to make our bamboo box we kind of think that okay if this is a chemistry project we can relate it to physics and bio because those are our two hand holding sciences right but it's been fabulous to see how they have been able to link it to geography for example their bamboo bottle now they are talking about geography and you know they are talking about history how old times you know that was the mode that we used to use like you know those pipes and all how they were all bamboo pipes and you know how we have gone beyond that and you know i think maker space comes in where it allows those creativity what what they are just thinking imagining to put into action so i've seen all three of them you know working together in tandem and bringing out like fantastic project very proud it's very very interesting the kids have come up with very interesting ideas i think uh, reasonably well researched i must say so i like the enthusiasm more than anything else it was not just um, informative not just enriching it was very enthralling and i found the children very enthusiastic about each and every presentation for instance i saw uh, one table which was talking about reviving a dead planet uh, using nanotechnology to terraform it and there was another table where they spoke about uh, alternate solutions for handling nuclear waste and alternate sources of energy in the real world you do use all the learnings you've used from school right so this project i think is helping us prepare for that since we've already started beginning to use all the things that we've learned from various sciences what happens in an alternate scenario on earth what if earth doesn't exist what if it ceases to exist what happens to humanity what happens to culture art food what happens to all of that what happens to us Uh, you know so uh, the children were kind of researching about it and then it became interdisciplinary you know so we went uh, to geography and we went to you know what happens to landforms then so we went to sciences and we were like so what happens to microorganisms do they exist or do they don't so regeneration of earth kind of became such a big theme in history we had not even you know imagined it to be that way we've gathered our learnings from several different subjects For example, we we implemented uh, design thinking and analysis from our make space classes into this project. So we sketched it out, drew a diagram, and really understood what we wanted our project to be. Uh, we used several concepts from maths during the whole building process from it, in it. Uh, then we we also uh, used yeah. geography because our entire project is based on geography. and uh, we also used english for our essay it's actually a really nice feeling to see how many number of people who have come to see just our project so uh yeah it makes me feel really like good it gives a clear idea that uh, they can able to withstand in the current and modern uh, world yeah how to adapt themselves how to solve the problem how to use their skills and knowledge in order to survive yeah and they have to learn to work together collaborate and come up with something as a team effort so they may have their differences of opinions i know they have had because sometimes when they have these calls at home i can hear you know over here what they are discussing and somebody says no it has to be done like this and the other person goes no 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 this is how it has to be done but they 
ultimately prepare something as a team and showcase it as a unified you know project so that is beautiful and that's what is required in today's fractured world i feel i think it's really an eye opener for me how the education has gone to a different level compared to when i studied here about 60 years ago yeah it is completely different so i think this has made me realize that i also need to question what i have learned in order to help my children learn what they need to learn teachers are phenomenal they are really good and they motivate them uh, they nourish them and i think because that parents i think they can take as uh, the children only up to a point yeah the intellectual creation and others is based on the teachers but me all of us have a child inside us right and um, the willingness to accept that you don't know comes easier when you're a child so you're and i think when you see that in children as they fumble and learn and you know accept their mistakes and go on it does humble us as also as adults thanks to the inventor team for nurturing a future generation of compassionate thinkers who are problem solvers and who are very uh, relevant and at the same time who are very inspired and they seem to be in this mode of always wanting to learn more understand more go deep not just the breadth but go through the depth of all the different subjects to come up with solutions i just want to say hats off i know that this is over and above what they teach in class so they have to you know uh, row several boats at the same time and they make it seem effortless but i am sure there's a lot of paddling happening underwater to stay afloat and they're doing a fantastic uh, job i know they encourage the students they are there with them they help them when they have any doubts and they do it with a smiling face there's no anger there's no irritation i think that's amazing and fantastic